Happy New Year, everybody. Clayton Wellwood here with the BC Libertarian Party. It's January 7th today, and I'm very excited about 2018 for a number of reasons. I want to talk about one today, and that's what I think blockchain technology may bring to the world in terms of increased freedom, disruptions of existing industry that'll open up new opportunities for people. It just looks like a very promising year. Uh, I've spent the past few days doing a lot of research in terms of uh, blockchain technologies, cryptocurrencies, that sort of thing. And I'm just amazed to see what's out there. And I highly encourage everybody watching this to, to do a bit of research. You'll, you'll find it very, very exciting, very uplifting in terms of the projects that uh, some of these new companies are, are coming out with. So I just wanted to talk about a few that uh, I think will be of particular interest to, to libertarians. Um, one, of course, is the financial freedom and privacy. You know, banks uh, and the traditional banking sector is one of the most, if not the most, regulated sectors of the economy. And we can all feel it every time we walk into, you know, a typical chartered bank. The experience that you have there in terms of, you know, just the, the amount of, of rules and, and even often the, the level of customer service that you that you get as a you know as a small depositor, it often feels like walking into a, uh, a government office in some ways. So I'm really excited to see how um, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology can bring down the cost of uh, doing financial transactions. That's already happening with uh, with Bitcoin. We're seeing very large uh, adoption of Bitcoin, and I think that we're really going to start to see this year and uh, in, the, in the following couple of years, more and more um, people who are selling goods and services start accepting Bitcoin. So that's, that's great news. Um, and also the, the great thing on the financial side with, with cryptocurrencies is just the, the level of privacy that you can get that you don't have uh, with your bank. Much fewer hoops to, to jump through in terms of you know, just getting up and running, you know, uh, if, if you compare that to, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, deal with a, uh, a brokerage for, you know, trading stocks, or if you want to open up a, a bank account, you know, it's a lot of forms, a lot of paperwork, going to the branch, doing this, doing that, you know, with, uh, with cryptocurrencies, it's, it's a much more uh, streamlined process to, to get going. So that's, that's very exciting, uh, because, you know, finance, trade, all these sorts of things. We need this to allow people to flourish, to pursue their, their economic goals and interests. Another area that I'm really uh, interested in is in the field of healthcare. So healthcare is one of these industries, you know, it's been insulated from innovation for a very, very long time. And now with uh, some of these uh, blockchain entrepreneurs, they're coming up with ways to, to digitize medical records and to put them on the blockchain, allowing the patients themselves to be the only ones who have access to that. So imagine if you had all of your medical records, you're the only one, uh, you know, unless you, you sign the, the right over to somebody else, like your family doctor or, or relative, you're the only one who can have access to that data. So any doctor you go to, it's not a matter of them, you know, looking in the computer to find out, you know, what uh, history of treatments you've had for this illness or that illness. You've got everything. So you know that every doctor that you see or healthcare practitioner you see is working off of the same information. And, and they're, you know, they perform services for you. That gets added to your health records, which are on the blockchain, visible to anyone that you provide access to. So I think this will really empower patients. You know, currently we've got a healthcare system that is extremely top down, and you know, patients often feel like they are kind of sidelined in decisions about their own healthcare. I mean, this is just completely wrong and completely backwards. And you know, you've I'm I'm sure we've all talk to somebody at least who've had this experience, if we haven't had the experience ourselves, of, you know, you kinda, you're kind of you pushed through the, the healthcare system, through a system of treatment, you don't necessarily uh, <laughs> get a choice at, at every step, you know, it's just like, well, the doctor said, you know, this is what's gonna happen, and I, you know, this is what's gonna happen. 
So I think that this technology has great potential, especially in uh, places like, like Canada that have a single payer system, to open it up, to get conversations going. Once patients feel more empowered uh, with access to their medical data, I think that they will want to have more choice in the healthcare system and this whole single payer system where you can only go to the government for healthcare, it's going to start to seem more and more antiquated as uh, this technology ramps up. So that's very exciting. Another thing uh, that's really cool is something called social network insurance. So this is the idea that um, instead of going to a big uh, insurance company for your, you know, let's just say it's your, your car insurance, you basically um, collaborate with a, a group of close friends, friends, relatives, people that you know and you have a high level of trust with. And, you know, maybe the, the five or 10 or 20 of you or whatever bind together to say, okay, we will be the insurance group. So anybody gets into a car accident, the other people in the, in the group will contribute to cover that cost. So the, the problem that this deals with is fraud right? Because that's a huge, it's rampant within all sorts of insurance systems. And, you know, insurers do the best they can, they, but they can't catch all of it. I, I think they don't even catch half of the fraud that they uh, estimate goes on. And uh, it's just not a, not a very efficient system. But if you have that uh, social network built into it, you know, there's the, there's the loss of reputation, right? If, if you were ever to be caught by your friends, you know, trying to to defraud them. I mean, nobody would do it, right? It's just, it, it would be preposterous, right? So it leads to, to much more honesty within the insurance system and it leads, leads to better behaviors, right? Like if you know that your friends are going to be out of pocket, if you, you know, if you, if you drop, if you uh, get drunk and then crash your car into a, somebody else or into a, a telephone pole. I mean, come on, you're not going to want to do that. You wouldn't take that risk. Think about the, the shame and embarrassment, uh, you know, of having to go hat in hand to your friends and say, listen, I did something really stupid. So it's going to make people better drivers. You know, if you apply this to, to health insurance, it's going to make people choose healthier lifestyles. They're going to be more focused on, you know, eating right and, and exercise and, and all those sorts of things because, it's part of a, a social network and people want to maintain their good standing uh, within that social network. So that's really cool. Um, speaking of, of social networks, we can also look at how blockchain is going to disrupt the online social networks. So right now, you know, it's very dominated by you know, well, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Google, all these big players, right? There's a lot of new social networks being developed and they're being developed on different models. Ones that tend to be more decentralized, allow for much more privacy for individuals. And most importantly, they don't necessarily collect your data and sell it to whoever they want to sell it to, which I think is one of the major problems with the big social networks that we have today. So that's really interesting. The idea that you know people can go online, they have they can uh, have a robust level of privacy. They know that they're not being spied on. They know that not, their data is not being sold. Maybe they can even sell their own data. That's one of the things that I've seen out there. Okay, your your data on, in terms of what websites you go to and this and that gets all picked up, and so that has some value, but you as the individual would have ownership of that. Then if you want to sell it to some third party, you could do that. Well, that seems fair. It's voluntary, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, just kind of coming back to the financial stuff, uh, there's going to be such, oh, well, there already is a huge opportunities for investment. There's all of these ICOs, uh, initial coin offerings going on. Uh, really interesting way to, to put your money somewhere and, potentially get a much better return than you've gotten. I mean, it's just been miserable, you know, uh, keeping your money in, in a typical savings account uh, over the last few years. I mean, interest rates are trying are, are starting to pick up now, so that's good. But I mean, I just think about the abysmal returns that I've got, uh, you know, on my savings over the past years. And it's just depressing when I see now what's happening with, uh, with uh, cryptocurrencies. And 
you know, it's not a get rich quick scheme. I mean, I think where the real potential is, is being able to invest in some of these firms that are, that aren't just creating currencies, but are creating these new technologies that I've just mentioned, uh, and that will be able to bring new value to the marketplace, new innovative ways of doing things that people will be ready to pay for. I think that's where the real investment potential is. Um, the other interesting thing is about this whole crypto space is that the the transaction fees tend to be a lot lower. I mean, you compare that to going to your bank and, you know, you deal with the, with the mutual fund there. And so, you know, the mutual fund managers, you know, they, they take a big, uh, big percentage of the, of the returns. You know, this is so much more um, a process of cutting out middlemen. That's, that's the, one of the great promises of a uh, of blockchain. So I think that we can expect you know, better returns uh, than we've seen in the, the traditional financial sector when blockchain investment and uh, technology really gets going. So I'll give you one, uh, I'll give you one example just to, to highlight this to kind of wrap things up here. So one thing that I've seen is a, a blockchain technology that would allow people to invest in a fractional way in real estate. Now this is really fascinating because to kind of get your toehold in property market, especially in a super expensive place like Vancouver, you need hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And not just 100, you know, you need probably half a million bucks these days to, to get anything in the property market. But the thing that uh, blockchain technology allows is fractional ownership of real estate among other assets, right? Which is really cool. It allows people with a much smaller sum to invest, to get a toehold in the property market, you can uh, share a, a large real estate asset, you know, like a shopping mall or whatever with, with hundreds of other people or dozens of other people. And, you know, you can get, uh, get a good return on that investment. So until now, basically real estate has been a game for, you know, larger, larger players, but now we can set up a system where anybody, even if they've got only a small amount to invest can get into the real estate game and and see the good returns that you know everybody who who has been invested at least in in this market over the last few years has seen so that's uh, that's a really promising thing so yeah go out there check out uh anything that you can find out about blockchain technology and and cryptocurrencies it's a really exciting world to be in and uh yeah i'm just really looking forward to what 2018 brings and um, the BC Libertarian Party will be here to act as a vehicle to to talk to people about this, to find out what they're excited about. You know, maybe we can even run a forum at some point this year where we can get some experts on on various aspects of a blockchain to to give their thoughts and, and have some discussion about that. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon.